So I'm taking my splits from these colonies and things are working out pretty well. I'm not doing any equalizing. I'm typically finding the top is getting pretty heavy in honey. So we got to move a little quicker here. And I'm finding my true splits are filling up pretty fast too. We got to get to them because they're sporting a lot of fur. And it's going to get hard to work with them if they hatch and pack themselves full of honey. So we're going to have cells ready on Saturday. And we're going to get busy and make up a bunch of nukes and uh, try to stay ahead of uh, the cells as they come ready. That's probably one of my bigger hives. I'll we'll have to come back and take these guys down on our next round. Make sure you don't swarm on us. Giving them space is going to help expand that nest. Okay, so now this honey box is on top. These are honey supers. So the queen has four or four and a half frames of brood in the bottom box. It's ready to hatch, so we need space for them to put those bees. We want all these bees for the honey flow, and we want to keep that queen laying, so she's going to lay down there, and she's going to move the nest up here as that <coughs> oh, excuse me. As that hive expands up in the top, she's going to follow the bees, and she's going to establish a nest between the two boxes. So this is the next step of my single box management, um, allowing that queen to come up and lay into the first honey box. We're not storing resources in this honey box yet. We are raising brood. Um, we have a heavy flow on right now, dandelions, wildflowers, clover is about to start on, there's spurge out there. Um, so they're gonna store a resource in here dedicated towards this brood. They're gonna use that resource to build bees. And uh, mm -hmm. the plan is, as the crops start to bloom, as we start to get into the heavy flows where they're starting to store an amount of surplus, we will move that queen back down to the bottom box and allow this top box to hatch out and backfill and then we can harvest it. It's um, June 18th and we're a week and a half away from pushing that queen down to that bottom box. That bottom box is nicely hatching out now. The queen we want in that top box laying up top. Um, we're noticing uh, fields coming in bloom. Alfalfa is blooming now. Um, you know, hay fields are being cut, but anything with seed production, uh, there's a nice bloom going on. Hopefully the bees don't get sprayed. Uh, we have canola bloom all over the countryside, just starting that early canola is starting to bloom. The other side of my apiary there hasn't even thought about it yet. So I'm gonna be going around uh, staging my work through the apiary to push these queens down to the bottom box in about a week and a half. But for this next week, I'm going to go through with the crew and we're going to equalize. I'm just going to take down the strong ones a little bit and boost the weak ones. And the reason I want to do that is I kind of want to measure their growth still just a little bit. Uh, take, you know, that excellence off some of those high performers because there's more chance you're going to swarm if we leave them too big and give them to the week just to kind of give them a little bit of a boost before we send her back down to the bottom box and send them into the flow. So I'm going to show you what I'm kind of talking about here. Here's a hive right on the money where I want them. You can tell just by the hive activity from the top here. This frame, that frame, that frame probably have uh, where the queen has probably been, probably been working laying brood. So there they're right where I want them. There, these guys are nice too. Let's move that over a bit. That frame, that frame, that frame, and that frame probably have the queen laying into them, which is perfect. Not a whole lot of resources up top. Through this round we kind of see how close we were with our split and evening out all the hives. I'd say this uh, this hive looks pretty good. Brood, brood, brood. 
maybe, you know. So there's a lot of attention up in the top box here. Not a lot of resources stored. It's perfect. I like to see that. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, so this hive's too big. I can tell it right off the mark. So I'm looking down between the frames and I'm not sure how easily this translates through the video. But we have attention to all the frames right across the top box. Not only that, but boom, 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 boom. Where there's honey being stored in the top box here. So what we want to do with this hive is we're going to pull this, this guy down a little bit. So by doing that, we're going to maybe pull a frame or two of honey, give it to a hive that has very little resources in the top box. We're also going to look at how much brood is being laid in the top. If there's three or four frames, maybe we'll leave them with two frames. We'll take two frames away from them just to pull, just to pull a little bit back, just to help uh, pull that the progression of that hive back just a little bit. So it'll take that kind of swarmy spirit out of them in about two or three weeks. So that's all we're trying to do. We're just trying to take the swarming out of them is what we're trying to do. And I can see this one probably be swarming. The big hive, lots of bees will produce you lots of honey. But don't let them fool you because this hive, if it swarms, then they're going to produce almost nothing as compared to a hive that looks a little bit weaker right now. These guys will grow and if they don't swarm, that population will continue to grow into a massive hive to bring in that honey flow. So it's a balance you guys have to figure out. It's uh, very subjective and what's, it, what differenti differentiates uh, beekeepers from one another. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull some resource from here. Okay, so let's just work through this hive to see what we've got. Bees are in a great mood today. Not that I haven't started the smoker yet. We got a little bit of resources going on in there. I imagine there's eggs in this frame, and there is. This frame is pretty much laid out with eggs, which looks awesome. And queen cups in the bottom. These are all queen cups yet. There's no eggs in these, which tells me that she's that this hive is you know just a bit, a little bit overbalanced. They're just a little bit too strong. Okay, so this frame is full of eggs. I'm gonna leave these guys in here. Do I have here but a frame of capped brood? Beautiful. And there the queen is. Well, she's probably in the top box, I know that, because she's laying uh, up into the top box. She'll be here for a little while until she moves back down. So a good chance she's up to top. So I found her. So I'm gonna put her aside. And what I can do now is I can them away the strength with the bees on the frame which is really beneficial if I don't find her typically what I do is I just shake the bees off the frame so here we go full frame of brood look at that frame of brood it's absolutely brilliant so I'm gonna pull that one away I don't want to split these guys down too hard because I want them to produce me a huge crop. I'm setting them back a little bit just by taking that brood away, taking away all that energy. Get a visual on here again. She's going down, taking this frame. There, I've just skimmed a nuke from these guys. And hopefully with these efforts, I've averted these guys from swarming. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Put these guys back together. But what I'm going to be doing is using these bees uh, to boost weaker colonies through the apiary. We'll just continue assessing our hives now. right on the money. This is 
pretty quick work because all you got to do is take a peek in if you know what you're looking for. These guys are borderline, but I'll leave them. They look good. Once you know what you want to see, you just keep looking for that. These guys are right on the money. These guys are making me happy. The apiary appears to be ready for the honey flow. These guys are a bit big. I'm going to pull these guys down. And I'm going to continue on just trying to find a weak one to show you guys. Right on the money. It's a little bit big. Pull a brood frame from these guys yet. Okay, so these guys are a little bit weak. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this hive and I'm, I'm going to give them a bit of a boost. So they're not, they're hardly even up to the top box. These guys could use two frame brood boost. I'm going to open up my, my donor box. It so happens I have two frames of brood here to drop in. like that. These bees are going to mingle quite nicely. I don't worry about spraying them down. I could use honeybee healthy or something to spray them, but I find bees mingle with each other beautifully this time of year. They're so focused on other things other than fighting themselves. So let's put a cap on these guys. We're going to go into here and we're going to pull some brood out of here. These guys are a bit big. And searching for the queen is a lot of work. What I typically do is we just go through and if we don't find the queen, we just shake all the bees off the comb. This is a frame full of uh, nectar. These guys are a little bit big, they, they almost have this top box full of nectar. Now we get into the eggs. Frame of eggs. Here's a frame full of larvae. Beautiful. Cap brood. So we're going to harvest this frame. Shaking all the bees off it because I don't want to bring the queen with me. Okay, so the queen can't be there. Put an empty frame back in. Let's see what we got going on here. Ah, another frame full of brood. That's awesome. Hatching, in fact. Because these guys are so full, I'm going to take both these frames away. So this is kind of the... So this is kind of where you have to lend your judgment to how much you got to take away, how much you're going to leave in there. It's why I have a hard time hiring people to figure this out for you. There's uh, some more brood here. So I'm going to keep this behind. This is young brood. Lots of eggs. I haven't found the queen. There's a little bit of resource there. Maybe what I'll do, maybe what I'll, what I'll do is I'll give, maybe what I'll do is I'll give this little bit of honey to this hive to help them along a little bit more. Empty. Drop a frame of nectar, honey in there. Okay, these guys have been boosted, these guys have been taken down. So it's just that easy. It doesn't take us very long in the yard to uh, sort things through. Um, you know, take about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just to go through and just even things right out.
Okay, so I identified this hive as being a small one. Needs a bit of a boost. Nothing going on up here. So I'm going to give him two frames of brood to help him out a bit. Take a look down here. Actually, I'm going to have to give him a frame of food too. Frame of brood. Ouch. Brood. Frame of food. Instant boost. So you'll kind of see how, uh, like we're managing right now, I have 1200 going that we're trying to manage and maintain for the honey flow. So we have a lot of hives to look after, uh, not enough time in the day to fuss over them all. So we, um, we employ all these little tricks to, uh, to manage our workload and manage swarming keep these hives in tip-top shape and manage them to express their absolute brilliance throughout the spring and then right into the honey flow to collect that honey crop because we only have one chance at getting it getting at those flowers and if our hives are not ready when those flowers come due um, we miss the honey flow and then we don't make any money and we can't pay the bills so we have to be able to manage more hives in less time with workers so as you watch my videos all the way along here, you kind of see all the little tricks and what we do to help manipulate these hives into the brilliance we need from the pull in this honey flow. Well, during my equalization round yesterday, uh, I wandered into the other side of the apiary and they are ready for honey boxes. The honey flow is hit. There is, here I'll show you a little pollen coming in at least. Loads of pollen. These boxes are filling up with honey. Uh, now is the time we need to give them space. So what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm equalizing the yard first off and then I'm sending the crew behind me and we're shaking the queen back down to the bottom box and inserting excluders and adding boxes on top. So I've equalized this side of the yard so it's ready to be shaken down. Just skimming from the strong and boosting up the weak a little bit. And then what the guys are doing is they're going through And we're shaking the top box down into the bottom box. So this way, everything in the top box will be shaken down to the bottom and then reorganized in an empty box to be put back over top of the excluder. And then we know that the queen will be down here. goes on the box had been shaken all the bees have been shaken down into the bottom box so we know the queen's down here we don't have to look for her the excluder holds her down the bees will go back over top and as you can see this box is filling full of honey and we put an empty on top <coughs> ready for the flow and all of a sudden we get sent into this massive honey flow I'll show you what we're seeing. Two or three days ago, these hives were, were light in stores. And now every one of our hives is being packed full of honey. So we've got boxes of honey on top of these hives. We've got to get these supers out now. So I'm going through ahead of the crew and I am equalizing. I'm trying not to get too excited because Earlier, I'm assessing any hive with a lot of resource, meaning uh, big and strong. But now there's so much coming in, all the hives are bringing in the resource. So I have to just try to figure out which ones are strong. Look at the nectar pouring from those frames. So I'm simply, simply just kind of thinning them down and spreading it out is all I'm doing for equalizing. Look at the nectar. these. These are getting soaked in the bottom. We're making quick work. We're trying to get boxes out before we uh, look at the nectar in there. 
Trying to get the boxes out before these guys plug themselves solid. So you guys are wondering what I'm doing today. Uh, we have all the excluders put in, thirds are on, and the bees are filling the box right to the top. Uh, we're working now to get fourths on, but what we're doing first off, um, because we put the excluder in, we're dividing up that brood nest now. And it's 32 degrees and we're, we're sweating buckets out here. Um, we're dividing up that brood nest and what we want to do is make sure that there is no queen activity up in that second box. Uh, I have some uh, untrained guys shaking bees uh, throughout uh, as we're putting excluders in and they may have missed uh, queen cells, super procedure cells. Um, also if there is any uh, hive that we accidentally killed the queen there'd be emergency cells up in that second box. So what we're doing is before we add the fourths we, we're quickly uh, tipping the hive back, the second back, and just leafing through the frames, just seeing if there's any queen cells up top. And we want to make sure there's nothing up top going on when we're trying to use as escape boards uh, when pulling honey off. Um, the bees don't clear the boxes as well when there are virgins up on top. So we've got to make sure that there's only brood up top to hatch out, to backfill, and any of the hive activity is going on now down below the excluder. So I'll kind of show you what we're doing. So we're just simply taking off the third, which we're finding is full of honey. And then we are going to tip back the that second box. It was a brood box, now we've turned it into a honey super. And we're just making sure that there is no queen cells. And here is one that got missed. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we got to make sure that this doesn't hatch out and cause us trouble later on. So we just kind of smash it. And then we just kind of leaf through the bottom looking, peering up just to take a look to see if there's any other queen cells in the top box that got missed through the shake. We're working pretty fast as we shake bees. <clears throat> so some had missed and then we've been through a few hundred hives now and we've noticed two hives that we're drawing out emergency cells where we probably killed the queen through our process. So we made sure that uh, they'd carry out the requeening process on their own below the queen excluder. And we killed all the emergency cells up top. So here's a hive I'm working on. Like here's our third. Look at the honey packed in here already. So we've got a box full of honey. We've got to put fourths on right now and fifths next week. So I just basically go through, leafing through. There's, there's cups in there, but they can't do anything with the cups. Leafing through the brood. Nothing going on. So then we close her up and they follow behind with fourths. And then we, as we're doing this, we're also assessing these hives further one last time. Um, this hive is particularly big, so I just count the brood frames in here and she's got four frames of brood still in this box, so we might skim this and boost up a smaller hive yet. So after this round, this is the last time we look down into the brood nest. This is it. This is it. 
We are now into the honey flow and we handle honey boxes from now on until September. So it doesn't take us long, uh, probably about half an hour a yard. Everything has a fourth box on it now. <clears throat> I have two crews going, so we're gonna get roughly uh, five or 600 hives done today and tomorrow. And then Friday, we should just be able to finish it up. Everything should be in fourth by Friday. Next week, we'll go around and add fifths and then see where the flow takes us from there. I'm just going through, finishing up, putting fourths on. Uh, the guys have the weekend off, so I'm doing this job myself. And I'm telling you, it sure makes me appreciate having a bunch of guys doing work for me because, boy, this has taken like four times as long as it usually takes. But uh, I'm just going through. I just want to go down. I just want to see where this colony is at. The rest of this yard is in pretty good shape. Uh, seconds full of honey, thirds half full of honey, and we're putting fourths on. We're going to put fifths on next week. So I'm just going to go down and show you what I'm seeing. It's the last colony of the yard. Forgot my smoke, of course, so I'm working without smoke, so they're a little bit worked up. box is you know three quarters full of honey. I don't know if you can see that in the shine of the sun. These guys could take a fourth like right now. The yard's pretty consistent. We spend a lot of time um, kind of equalizing things, sorting things through. Now I just want to take, I don't do this on a regular basis, but I just want to take a peek. This colony is full of honey, lots of bees. I just want to see if they were preparing for swarming underneath. And so far, just I just do this spot checks through my apiary just to see if I got that balance right. But I generally, for the most part, I'm not paying any attention to this bottom box anymore. Just spot checks to see how close I got to my assessments. I'm just looking down the bottom. They're a little pissed because I don't have smoke. But there isn't any cells. There aren't any, there's cups, but no cells. So it looks like I've been successful on keeping this colony moving upwards. So it looks like I've been successful in keeping my apiary moving upwards. All the growth that has hatched has gone straight to work collecting honey, and they seem don't they they don't seem to be interested at all in swarming. So these guys are getting a fourth. The guys are coming around next week, putting on fifths, whatever needs it, and we're going to be extracting in two weeks, by the looks of it. We just received a rain two days ago. We were starting to get really dry with the heat. The crops are still in good shape, giving off a little bit of nectar, starting to slow down a bit. Um, we'll get two inches of rain and the crops will come back 100%. So there is nectar shaking from these frames. The bees are filling up. Um, and we got to spend a lot of attention just making sure they have enough space up top uh, to be able to capture all the production that's about to come in. So I'm making my Sunday afternoon uh, apiary assessment. Um, right now we are right in the middle of the honey flow and these boxes are filling up so I have to decide on when I'm going to start extraction. And with that I have to decide how many boxes to put on these hives. This is a common question I get from a lot of beekeepers. So I'll just kind of step you through just a small little process of what I do just to help judge what's going on, what I'm seeing and what I should be anticipating. Uh, as of right now, I can't start pulling honey until next Monday. Uh, the reason for that is, well, because of reasons other than the business. So the earliest I can start pulling is on Monday, which is the 16th. It's a little bit early for me anyways, uh, but these boxes are filling up. So I'm targeting the 16th. Okay, so what I'm doing is, uh, so what we did earlier is we shook the queen down. Uh, we gotta wait three weeks after that, so that timeline matches up nicely. 
but uh, we've also had thirds, fourths. Those are filling up. And I generally have a rule, it's a, a box a week rule. And when we're in a good strong honey flow, these bees can fill a box uh, per week. We had to judge the colony size to be able to determine that. Some are a little bit slower than the quicker ones, but we have to assess uh, these colonies to be able to make sure they, they have adequate space to store all this honey flow as it comes in, because we don't want to miss any of it. So we had them fourths last week. I was way out to the lake. I had my guys go around and stack fifths on most of them. So I have 1,200 hives going on. When you include my nukes, I'm pushing 1,400. I'm not even sure anymore. I can pull 500 hives a week. Okay, that's what my capability is. So what I do is I take my apiary and, and if let's say rough numbers, if I have 1,500 hives, um, I divide that into three. 500 hives per week. That means it's going to take me three weeks to get through all 1,500. So I have a little bit less than that, but all the same, it takes me three weeks. The first week, uh, we're getting to them uh, quicker than the last week, right? So the first week, we're going to box them up a little bit tight. So we want them to use that space. We want them to fill it right up so we're not pulling empty boxes on the first pull. The second week, that's a that's a one week further than uh, the first week's pull, uh, so you can pretty much count a box on that, right? So we are a little more generous when we box up those hives. Typically, we give them all f fives. The third week, you know, that's two weeks. That's you know, two more boxes. You know, you, you get a box, box and a half more. So we box those guys up pretty generously. Um, and I'm, I'm standing in my yard right now. This is one of the yards that I'm scheduled to pull in the first week. So I'm just going to show you what I'm looking at uh, and what to gauge. I've had them put fifths on because there's a pretty strong flow going on. And I'll just show you kind of what I'm seeing here. So I'm just going to show you the staging and some of my hives here. Um, I'll just show you what I'm seeing. So this hive here is in fourths. This hive here, the crew has put into fifths. We're pulling honey in one week from today in this yard. So I'll just show you what I'm looking at right now and what I expect to see in a week's time. So in this colony, we have bees actively working to the top, working right across the, uh, the nine frames. actively storing nectar up to the top. But there isn't a lot of honey stored in the top box here yet. So we look down into the third, and this third is practically, is about three quarters full of honey. So not a lot of cappings yet. I'll just pull a frame and I'll show you. I don't have smoke with me, so I'm but here is a full frame of honey, not cured yet, not, there's no cappings at all. This extends right out to the outer frames. So this box is nicely filling. It's not going to take long to finish off this third box. And we'll have them move into the fourth. So it'll take them a week to finish that off and then nicely get this box full uh, for next week. What I'm gauging is I don't want this top box like completely plugged because that usually tells me that I lost production. I want to pull with this top box about three quarters full so I know there's a little bit of space yet. <clears throat> it's not as efficient as having a plugged box but at the same time I want to gather, I want to capture all that honey crop, all that honey flow coming in. So by having just a little bit of Leftover space on the top as I pull these boxes, it kind of reassures me that I didn't leave any honey in the field. So we look at this colony. And the crew put fifths on this one. And these bees are actively filling this top box full of nectar. They're working right across the top. This frame's full of nectar. The outer frames aren't quite worked on yet, but there's at least five or six frames in here that are actively being stored with nectar. <clears throat> I look down in the fourth, 
And this fourth looks like the same as the third did in this other colony. This fourth, actually this fourth is getting some cappings in the top here. Not just, just starting. Here's, here's a frame where they're starting to cap on the outside. These frames are filling up quite nicely. Getting some weight in there. There's a lot of honey in there. Looking down into this third, and this third is pretty much full of honey. Still working their way up. So in about a week's time, these will all be filled up and cured, and they'll be nicely on to the fifth here. And like I say, this top box I don't want completely full, I want them nicely filling it up, but not plugged, so I know that they had lots of space to store the, all that incoming nectar. So I'm just going to step through a few colonies here, just to see what's going on. So when I'm going through, I'm a week away, I'm just taking a peek, I'm just double checking the, my crew's assessment to see if they're on the money or not. See the bees right across the top bars there. And it's hard to tell from a video here, but they, I can tell from up here that they're preparing that comb, so they're actively storing nectar in those combs. So they assessed this one in the fifth correctly. So what I'm assuming now is this box to be mostly stored honey, and it is. What I can see is big fat frames being filled out. And this box will be, um, I, I, am, I assume this box here will be capped over this coming week. And the bees will be moving up into that top box to store that fresh nectar coming in. So the crew assessed this colony correctly. There's probably 10 or 15 pounds of honey on the top here already. Just take a peek and... It's colony two, the bees are nicely spread across the top. Kind of see it from the bottom too here. They're actively storing a lot of honey in the top box here. I'm looking down into the bottom. It's nice to put, pick up boxes and feel that weight. Looking down into the this next, this uh, the fourth here, and I'm not sure if you can see, but there is honey actively stored in all. The frames on the top here looks like they've just about filled that box out. They got another week's work on that and they'll have that plugged up. Let's see what's underneath this. Oh yeah, this box is heavy. And this box is practically all there's a lot of cappings going on in there. This side hasn't been uh, capped yet, but this side has. Just, just starting to cap. So they're just starting to cap the edges there. Beautiful. So this box is pretty much done. This one will be done this week and they will be on to the fifth. There's a lot of cues that the bees give you to let you know whether or not uh, they're comfortably um, producing for you or if they're going into swarm mode. Now when I worked through these colonies what I noticed was bees working all throughout evenly across the top bars actively storing nectar. I'm looking at the entrances of these hives. These guys are fanning. If you look at all the fanning going on there to dry down the incoming nectar and just busy, in and out busy, uh, actively working. Now these colonies are pretty big colonies. They're growing. They're going to go through another hatch rate shortly. There's going to be a lot of bees in these hives. 
we don't want them to swarm. Right now they're telling me that they're not even thinking of swarming. They're in work mode. Uh, and that's really reassuring for me to see. Uh, just little cues like that you're looking for. When a colony starts to prepare to swarm, they actually, it tends, they tend to, or I find it seems like they tend to shut down. Their bees are just hanging around. Um, there's not a lot of work going on up top. Uh, and yeah, they're just preparing to divide that colony off to start a new one somewhere else. But when you see a colony actively working, spending all of its attention towards that honey crop out in the field, more than likely those guys are working towards uh, keeping themselves together and producing that massive honey crop you want. So I'm just going to pull these guys down just to take a look at the brood nest and just to see what's going on down there. Full of honey. This third's full of honey. Beautiful frames. Just starting to get capped over. Full box of honey here. This box is practically capped. They're back filling around the emerging brood nest. Oh, we go down. Go down into the brood nest. Take a look underneath. And I'm not seeing any preparations for swarming. I can't really tell much on the camera there. I'll just put them back together, take a look at what's going on. Forgot to bring the smoker with me, so they're just a little bit riled up. frame and see what's going on here. Beautiful laying pattern. Love it. Larvae, eggs. There's no back filling going on. I'm not gonna to dig too deep into these guys. These guys are massive. They've got another full frame of brood here. Pull one more frame out. Queen's doing quite well. He's got some pollen, some nectar in, eggs. So I'm counting brood frames right across here. Here's a super seizure cell going on. And a virgin walking around. So it looks like these guys are in the middle of a queen replacement. So she's going to find that old queen. That old queen's still laying. I'm just going to close these guys up to let them take care of whatever is going on inside here. 
I'm looking all through here. This frame is just full of larvae and fresh eggs. Standing straight up. These are fresh eggs in here. So the old queen is either just being killed off or Or she's getting the hunt. I'm not worried about that virgin running around uh, to swarm this colony off because I'm looking in the front. They're actively working and all these boxes have bees actively, actively working inside here. So I'd call that a queen replacement. Just the way I like it. So I'm gonna put them back together. I'm going to, out of curiosity, I'm gonna mark them and come back next week just to see if indeed it is a supersedure and if they successively were able to switch those queens over. Um, there's a lot that goes on inside these colonies uh, that we're not aware of. We can only do so much. We can set the hives up and then we basically had to have to let them do what they want to do. And yeah, sometimes it's swarming, it's out of our hands. A lot of the time it's just queen replacement. That just helps rejuvenate that nest and carry it forward. These guys are producing me like four boxes of honey right now. So I'm just going to put them back together, uh, let them get back to work. Uh, hopefully replace that queen successfully, get her out mated, and then I'll come back next week, hopefully to, uh, or maybe in a week and a half, I'll give her some time and I'll see a fresh reinstated brood nest inside this colony. So it's July 15th. I'm just making my Sunday assessment rounds. Um, I'm thinking about setting boards tomorrow, uh, which will mean that'll be the start of the honey pool. I just want to go around first before we get going just to see what the moisture is on our honey. Um, I got to make sure that the honey's not wet. If the honey's wet, wet, what I mean, when I'm saying wet, I mean like 20, 22 percent. That's pretty wet honey. I do not want to start pulling honey when it's wet. What we want is 18 and a half, 18 percent honey. Um, you know, if it's about 19, I might push the boundaries a little bit at 19. My packer uh, packs tens of millions of pounds of honey and they can blend uh, that 19% off pretty quick with uh, the later stuff I produce at 16%, just as long as I know it's coming in. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through a few hives here uh, with my refractometer just to test the honey up on top and to, to test the honey down below and I'm going to take a sample throughout the hives um, in a little vial just to mix it together to see what my average moisture content is. So I have a pretty good idea what the con moisture content is of this honey before I pull it. So I don't want to pull wet honey. I don't want to have to deal with that stuff and neither does my packer. So I'm just going to take the moisture content of the, the honey in every one of these boxes here and I'm going to take a random sampling uh, throughout the, uh, the boxes with my refractometer. This, uh, this tells me the moisture content of my honey sample. Just to give me an idea of where this hive is at. Bees right to the top and these guys are full of honey. Holy moly. Oh, I don't have my smoker again. Lots of bees going on in here, and they are full. So I'm just going to pull a frame out, which is capped by the looks of it. Starting to cap. Okay, so I just take a sample, just in the middle of the frame here. I'm not going to take a sample of the capping. And the top box is reading 
there's no use me testing the rest of these boxes. At the top box is 17.5%, then she's a go. Just gonna put my gloves on so they don't sting me right off the mark here. I don't have any smoke with me. I'm always looking to the trees, working these yards, looking for swarms, and always looking up, but I always get her for I haven't opened a colony yet that has that has a few bees in it which is great. These guys are capped right to the outside. Look at this, I'll pull an outside frame for you guys here. Oh man. Starting to cap around right to the outside here. So I'm just going to, here, I'll show you guys, top box outside. These guys are cooking. I'm just going to uh, do a quick test on this one. That's a 18.2. So I've gone through a few colonies now and I'm registering most in the top box at, you know, 18, 18 and a half. And we have lots of strong ones here. The majority is plenty plenty good to go. The smaller colonies uh, throughout the top box is 20-ish. The bottom, once you get down to the bottom, we're getting into the 18s. So there's no question about it. We're ready to go here. Monday morning and we're setting uh, skateboards. These hives look fantastic. They're all full of honey. We're pulling them up pretty easy. Bees are in a good mood today. Uh, they're out foraging, actively foraging. And we're, uh, well, I'll show you what we're doing here. So I have a full staff today. Uh, we haven't started extracting yet. We got to pull these boxes up, get the bees cleared, and then get them back in by the end of the week. So we'll be probably extracting on Thursday. Until then, I have a full crew overstaffed in the yard until we get going here. And I'll just show you what we are doing. So basically, we are lifting the boxes up, putting three empties down, and the escape board. So we come in and we lift up the full boxes of honey, leaving the brood box below the excluder, and then we replace with three empty boxes. Just to be able to catch that flow as it continues to come in. The bees won't even know that we re removed the honey, they'll recognize empty boxes above and they'll go into overdrive to fill these boxes back up. Stacking boxes. Uh, and these boxes are full of honey. These hives have been performing really well. I just want to show you something here. Here's a colony. I left my tags on of my assessments in the spring. And there's a blue tag and there's a, a gray tag. And the blue tag means we've harvested a full split off. The gray tag is that we've pretty much just skimmed them or, or kept them the same. So when you look at the two hives here, they both yielded four boxes full of honey. Except if you consider that blue tag yielded a full split, this one probably yielded, yielded another three boxes, maybe four boxes on top. That just shows you the production difference between the strong colonies and then the colonies that don't yield a split coming out of winter. I'll just take you down. I'll show you the guys working the arm here again. These are actively foraging. I'll drop three empties on top. Board, and then down the box full of honey. Just like that. We'll come back in two, two and a half, three days and we'll just simply strip those off and put them on the truck. Look at the top here. We can fill it right up the top. Here's a spacing problem. They've conveniently filled it up with comb. These guys, they're just starting to cap the top box here.
Well, the first day of polling, honey. Uh, I got some guys back in the honey house cleaning the place up, getting the, um, the equipment ready to go. Uh, I brought a bunch of guys out to the yard and we're just stripping boxes. So uh, it's pretty quick work. I'm just going to show you what to do. I just kind of caught up in my uh, job here in the yard. So I'll just briefly show you what we're doing. All these boxes now have been cleared. The bees are now down into the bottom, filling those empties back up with nectar. And these tops are free of bees. Stacks up, and then just simply put, you slide them on to the right. pallets on the truck. Here, Patty. And the guys work their way out. And as you can see, these bees are busy bringing nectar, filling the comb back up. We're a little overstaffed right now because we're not running the honey house yet. But as soon as we do that, we'll have two or three with me in the yard at all times, and then the other honey crew will be working in the honey house. Oh, a pun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, a pun. It's like a clue. You can see all the bees have moved down. They're all underneath the screen. They can't get back up through the cones. I'll get Cameron to open up the top and I'll show you the bees working on the cones. girls are preparing the comb right now. We moved all the way up to the top already and they're bringing in fresh nectar. So this frame is half full of fresh nectar already. So that's three boxes they're working on all at once. So I'm rushing the, uh, the escapes uh, by about a day just because I want to get the honey house going but it appears the bees are in heavy enough flow that they're clearing quite nicely. There isn't whole lot in these boxes. Pretty much full. Just driving by one of my nuke yards. I was here five days ago and these guys were just getting into the top box. Thought I had a little bit of time. Look at this, I've gone through a hatch. I told, I, I mentioned this earlier, gotta watch because these guys will just absolutely explode. And look at this, they're absolutely packed. They've got their boxes absolutely packed full of honey. I gotta get boxes on these guys like right now. It's amazing how quickly these guys can pack away the resources. Absolutely packed. I won't get to these guys in another 10 days, so I'm gonna have to add some equipment just to keep them at bay. Right packed. So I'm not gonna open up anymore. We have that big thunderhead coming at us. So I gotta get busy, I gotta get that truck load. We're just poked into another yard. Just took another yard to finish the day, so I gotta get that undercover before we get rained on. These guys are gonna have to hang on until I get back with more space. <clears throat> so we had a nice little rain last night, and what I noticed today, I'm just 
stripping off boxes. I noticed earlier that the flow had really slowed down. And the bees weren't filling the comb up as quick. As we can see, I don't know if you can see that, but that's a frame of fresh nectar. So we're back in the flow. boxes are packed. It's like uh, 300 pounds in this stack. Out pulling honey today, there's a half section of canola just to the north of us and I want to show you what's going on underneath the boxes we are pulling. So these boxes are practically full. And you can tell when there's a good flow going on because underneath the covers on the hives that have lots of bees, we have wax being built up. So they fill up the boxes and then they start filling up that empty space between the escape board and the, right in here, between the escape board and the frames. So this is a sign of lots of young bees and a heavy flow coming in. So these two boxes have been filled within the last three days. We'll put another box on and maybe we'll put a fourth on depending on how long that canola blooms to the north of us. It'd be nice if we had a whole countryside with late bloom canola like that. Just parts of our apiary experience a nice uh, second flow like this wherever there's no alfalfa or late, late canola or sunflowers. One behavior of the bees I never get tired of is when we pull our truck into the bee yard it uh, kind of blocks their, their flight pattern. So when we move the truck, the bees go out of their holding pattern and they all find their home all of a sudden. So before you know it, the truck is moved and they all of a sudden find their home. And they come in so hard that they actually hit the grass going into the hive. Really neat. You can see the balls pulling on them. This is canola pollen coming in. Little yellow faces. I never get tired of this. Well, I made a mistake through noon today. Left a few boxes out of extracted comb. And it has caused a huge robbing fury. So what are we, July 28th? And we are in heavy robbing. So it looks like we're gonna be extra vigilant on uh, what we do around the honey house and around the yards to avoid robbing. Because I run escapes right through to the end, I uh, use these hive covers. So I'm pulling honey right through the Robbie season. And it allows us to set our boards 
and then uh, keeps the bees out of the boxes. So when we come back, they they have no uh, they have not had access to the boxes. We pull into the yard and we can strip this a stripper yard in about half an hour, and we can be in and out before the bees actually know we're here. So it's an extra little step, but it works really well. So this yard has a bit of honey in it. As you can see, my boxes are pretty old. I'm starting to upgrade them. So I have lots of cracks and everything. So when I insert these as skateboards and the bees move out of the honey boxes and move down, there's no more guard bees up top and the bees will come and rob the honey out through the cracks. So I used to tape them, as you can see here. But they, my boxes are in such rough shape that I use, was using a lot of tape and it was becoming a big job. So what I did, and this is not typical of anybody I know, but I made these covers one winter. Found a fabric shop, sold me a bunch of cheap knit fabric, and I sewed these together. So now we just pull into the yard, set these escapes, and then pull over these covers. It's got elastic on the bottom to snap tight, and it has it absolutely eliminated all the robin concerns. It looks really goofy, but it works. So we set these escapes, the bees move down, we come into the yard, uh, we pull off the covers and we strip the hives of all the honey boxes on top. And it works very well. So we'll be out of here before these bees actually know we're here. And this is completely eliminated uh, robbing throughout the season. So just one of those things that I do differently and it works really well. So we've been here roughly half an hour, got the yard pulled off and the bees are just finding us. So those are the uncovered boxes in the back. The tarp helps keep the bees off the comb. So just as they find us, we are out of here. So I've been noticing in this yard piles of dead bees in front of all the hives. smell just a little bit of you know that dead bee smell you see sign of pesticide poisoning the production in this yard wasn't compromised um, maybe the internal health of the hive has been compromised compromised I'm not sure hives seem to be okay so it might just be an acute poisoning I'm sure something that the bees will yeah, deal with yeah, we'll see you there. <clears throat> there has been a lot worse cases than this. Nevertheless, it's still a concern of mine of the pesticide use uh, within agriculture. Um, it's hard to get away from it, but we as beekeepers see the direct result of it. So like it says, two truckloads in today. We'll get another two truckloads in tomorrow, and then we're gonna pull the last uh, 12 yards um, next week, and then feed. We're out pulling honey today. This is the second round. And we're finishing things off. So the bees are back down into the bottom brood chamber. So this is it. What we're doing is uh, we set escapes. The top three boxes have honey in them. We'll put the escape in and all the bees, all the bees are driving down into the bottom brood box. We have supplement on just to help supplement the developing winter nest. As you can see they've been active on it. They're just devouring these patties. You can also see a little bit of uh, comb being built up on top. And this is a sign, this is a really good sign. Uh, this is a sign of young bees within the brood nest. And what we're doing is when we set these escape boards underneath the honey supers, 
what we're doing is we're we are removing those honey boxes from the function of that brood nest that escape creates a barrier so there is no longer um, continual hive movement up into those honey supers <clears throat> so what we do is we feed some syrup there's Nick he's just finishing feeding this yard the second round of syrup just to bulk them up and uh, by feeding that syrup it ignites the whole process right now there's no nectar coming in so these bees are lazy they're looking for food but they don't actively have any food to forage on but by providing syrup when we put that board in those processor bees within the nest they get excited and they start uh, summoning attention to the whole entire nest and as those bees get excited they want to go collect the nectar they'll start leaving the honey boxes go down through the brood nest go collect uh, resources bring it back in but they can't bring that syrup back into the honey boxes because it's actively been removed um, by that escape board so then they store all the syrup down below and this helps clear these boxes of bees at a time when there's dearth so we come back and there's no bees in these boxes because they've been they're starting to cycle and as they try to cycle they get interrupted by that escape board so that is what we are doing and that is how we do it it also provides the benefit of when we strip these top boxes off this, this is full of honey these uh brood chambers underneath are like eight to ten frames of brood underneath very little honey they have pollen stores and such so we have to make sure that these hives have enough syrup on hand to be able to keep themselves alive until we get more syrup out to them. So when we put these escape boards in, we're feeding at the same time to make sure that they're bringing in nourishment below to keep those bees alive. Very important. Right now is a critical time of building a winter nest. Uh, so we try to put as much attention as we can to promote all the conditions. It's like it's like a recipe, you uh, give a little bit of protein, uh, the pollen's coming in, a little bit of sugar, and it should make you a very adequate, good looking brood nest for winter. My winter bees. So whatever we do, we need to see that late flow of pollen coming in. It's very important building a winter nest is to have that source of natural pollen coming in. It's very important for building bees. We can't do, we can't build bees without pollen. No matter how much supplementation we do, we need that pollen to come in to help uh, properly nourish this nest. Supplementation just aids them in the development of our, of our bees and brood nests. We just, we're just trying to promote um, all the basics. It's the pollen that's coming in that builds the bees, that provides them with all those essentials that we can't provide them.